You can trust us. We said we would spend a hundred million dollars on nice to create jobs. At the end of this year, this Labour Party government would have spent one hundred million nine hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars. We kept the promise. We spent the million dollars. This time, we are going to help our young people. The children of the poor and vulnerable who cannot go to the banks to get loans. We are going to create a special trust fund for them, which will be administered by an independent board. And they will make the decisions as to who will get the grants for their university education and the conditions under which they will get it. And that is what JDM meant. This is a Labour Party that cares for its young people, wants them to advance because it knows that the future of this country rests on the quality of education, the quality of mind, the quality of our people. And make no mistake about it. Each of you standing here tonight, you have talent. You have ability. The problem with this society is that some of you never had a chance to show what talent, what ability you had. And that is why when we created universal secondary education, it was meant to give you an opportunity that you were denied so you can blossom and discover who you are and what you are capable of. <coughs> but I said, you will see the largest program of public works ever conducted in this country in the next term. The Grosley Highway will commence construction. The agricultural feeder road will get off the ground. We spoke of Venus, the road being reconstructed. In the next few days, there's going to be the opening and commencement of other projects like a diagnostic facility. Schools are being built. You go to Denry, school construction. Soon, so they'll start. But there are three major projects to create jobs in this country and to resolve problems that we have. The Labour Party pledges tonight that it will bring relief to the police force and constructs a new police headquarters for the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. We have already announced that we will construct a new judicial and national judicial complex or a halls of justice on the Millennium Highway. And then I also told you some days ago that this Labour Party, this Labour Party that understands the soul of the people of St. Lucia, every man and woman on this platform know how to express Who's the St. Lucian? What is a St. Lucia? They know the soul. They know the spirit. I'll tell you one thing. All of us are 100% St. Lucian. We speak your language. We know how you feel. We understand your pain. We understand your anguish. But we also know that we are the only government that respects the artists of this country and give them opportunity. After all, are we not the government that restored the childhood home of Derek and Roddy Walcott? Are we not the government that gave Sesson Descart a knighthood? Are we not? And let me tell you, we are going to construct 
a national theater complex. Finally, to give our artists a home in this country. As a country that has two Nobel laureates, it cannot be right that we have a building, a cultural center on the hill that is nothing more than a rectangular shape building. Yes, it has helped us over the years. Yes, that's where we have had our performances. But my goodness, we have produced two Nobel laureates, some of the best poets in this country, some of the brightest minds, but we have never treated them well. And we must do so this time by finally giving them a home. So the Labour Party pledges that it will construct a shock, a new national theatre complex. Water is a problem. Water is a problem. And what strides we have made. Wasco has not settled all your problems. But how often have you heard complaints in the Castries Basin that you are no longer getting water? Or you are not getting water? Why? Because under labor, we have improved our water supply. But we know we have a looming crisis in the south. That crisis is that we are beginning to attract major investments. You can't have investments without a reliable water supply. And so this Labor Party pledges to commence the process to construct a dam on the Trumase River to ensure that the people of the South have a guaranteed water supply. And we have begun to transform our economy. We saved our economy from the IMF. We restored its health. We now have respect. Investors are now coming back to St. Lucia, buying our bonds, prepared to give us loans. But there is one area we have excelled, and we are not giving those who have excelled sufficient support. I am referring to the services sector. There are hundreds of young people who are investing in services, who are exporting their skills to other islands. They not only work here, but work elsewhere. A while ago, Jadia spoke about having a Labour Party app. Yes, a lot of people feel they can do an app. Google it and put it, or go to Play Store, put it on your phone. But I want to tell you, that Labour Party app that you can now access was done by a young St. Lucia. It was made here in St. Lucia. We didn't have to go overseas, and that's my point. These young people who are working in the services sector, they need recognition, they need help. They too must get incentives just like the hoteliers, just like the manufacturers, because they are the new generation of the future. And this Labour government will give them a special regime of incentives so that they can be part of this economy. And there is something that I said to you once, like I told you about that East Coast Highway. My time in politics is not much longer. I must be go and begin to prepare a bed on which to lie. But I'll tell you this, there's nothing that caused me more pain and anguish than we cannot give you the health care that you need. <laughs> it cannot be right. That St. Lucians are unable to pay their bills at hospitals. That St. Lucians are turned away because they cannot meet their medical costs. <coughs> it cannot be right that we have to be begging Martinique, we have to be begging Cuba, we have to be begging Barbados, we have to be begging Trinidad to take our people and give them the health care they need. This time around, 
You and I will have to make the sacrifice, but we must introduce universal health care once and for all. There must be no turning back. Because as I watch you tonight, young and old, young and old, not so old, middle age, as I watch you tonight, I know that many of you worry about your future, worry about the quality of care that you get. And we must measure our civilization, our quality of life, by guaranteeing our people that they can be taken care of when they fall ill. It's not enough that we have a program to look after our elderly people. We must look after them when they fall sick as well. So we are going to invite you to join us once and for all to create and introduce universal health care. And that is a pledge of this government. Education for us is key. We said so. JJ told you, we created a revolution in this country. We have guaranteed every child a place in a secondary school. But we suffer one weakness. We do not have enough of our people getting university education. If you want to develop this country, you must develop the quality of minds of the people in this country. You must give them new opportunities, new vision, new possibilities. That's how you develop a country. You don't want a country where people are riddled with poverty of the mind. You want a people who are energetic, who are skilled. And that is why one of our other pledges Pledge number 11 is to transform this Arthur Lewis Community College to a university college with full degree granting status. And I want you to see how we link things in this Labour Party. Yes, we will create a university granting our degrees under the umbrella of the University of the West Indies, yes. But what point it is to have a university and all our children cannot get access to the university. That is why earlier on I told you and I spoke to you of a pledge to create an education trust fund so that our children from poor families, they too can get access to university education. We understand as a party. That if our economy has to become strong and independent, we have to be liberated from the importation of oil products. I remember saying to you sometime last year that yes, the price of oil will decline, but as sure as the sun rises in the sky in the east, prices will go back up. And they have already started. The prices have started to go up. But we can save ourselves because we have abundant energy. And so we got to work towards a complete transition away from fossil fuels, from the gas, from the diesel. We hope that we can provide alternative en energy that will generate at least 100% of renewable energy by 2005, 2035, sorry. And again, don't tell me, don't tell me it's impossible, it's another impossible dream that we on this side, we can never do it. Don't tell me that, please. Why? Because the evidence is tearing you in the face. We are the government that will be establishing the first wind farm outside of Bordelais on the hills overlooking the sea. 
in the Bordelais area. <laughs> we are the government that will establish the first solar energy farm to generate electricity in the south. That will be done by Lucilex. And you know, you have to be proud of this little country of yours. Sometimes we are so negative that we don't see our own value. Sometimes we are so negative, we don't see our triumphs. We don't see our successes. Sometimes we look at ourselves through our own eyes, but we often don't look at the eyes of others to see how they look at us and what they think of us. You know, this Caribbean region is fascinated by St. Lucia. They're fascinated by you, not just your personality, but they know that you have something that is unique, something that is different. The problem is that what you have, you destroy it because you inflict so many wounds, so many pain, so much pain on yourselves that you don't see your real value. Why do I tell you that? Look at the success this government has achieved negotiating the climate change talks. Look at the success the French government turned to St. Lucia to our Minister of Energy, Jimmy Fletcher, put him on a special committee to negotiate with the rest of the world. And if there was one minister in the climate change talks, that loomed large beyond our size, that the rest of the world respected, the rest of the world asked for. And even the flambos are trying it, by the way. It's Jimmy Fletcher. And on the